Podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our discussion on Design Manager's Vision Panel. My name is Brad, and I'll be hosting the demonstration today. If you have questions during the webinar, feel free to enter them into the questions pane under Go to Webinar Panel. If the question is outside the scope of today's discussion, please email them to support at designmanager.com. Lastly, if you missed a portion of the webinar or want to review any of our past discussions, go to our YouTube channel at Design Manager Inc., Design Manager INC. And here you can see all sorts of topics, including short quick start videos, helpful tutorials, and more comprehensive webinars, which we categorize into our project management courses and accounting courses, along with our weekly webinars, such as today's discussion. Okay. So, as I mentioned, today we'll be reviewing the information and functions available into the vision panel on Design Manager to see how this valuable tool can keep you informed and efficient. So, let's get started. The vision panel is located on the right side of your Design Manager and can be configured to always be displayed or to be viewed on demand. So, I can simply hover my mouse over the Design Manager vision and the panel will pop right out. Move back and it'll go away. So this is how I can utilize the vision panel on demand. I can also use the thumbna thumbtail thumbnail to pin the design manager vision panel. That way it'll always be visible. Simply click the pin again and design manager will then hide the panel. So let's go ahead and leave ours pinned and up for our demonstration today. Now, before we get deep into the information listed on the vision panel, let's quickly point out a few additional features available. First, as you can see in the bottom half of the frame, we have easy access to all of Design Manager's user resources from our help center. You can go right to our YouTube channel at Design Manager Inc. as we saw by clicking on the how-to videos. And there we go. You can also jump right to our help center to search our knowledge base. Just like that. You can easily review all of our resources as well. There they are. And very conveniently, you can contact our technical support department by clicking the contact support. And here you can easily and quickly fill out a new support ticket to get the most immediate response from our technical support team. So all of that access to those resources is right from the vision panel, really making uh, a valuable tool in and of itself. Also, whenever you're on a window with pictures or thumbnails displayed of your images, such as the specifications window, the inventory stock item glossary, new proposal window, etc., the help center transforms into the image frame where you can see a larger image of the associated picture. So let's jump on our project specifications, go to our Hilson project, and you can see, just like that, my image of my first item is automatically displayed in the image frame. And so if I scroll down, you can see how quickly the image updates as well. Also, right from the image frame, I can load an image that I've already saved on my computer or network, I could scan one in for my scanner if I have one attached to my computer, or I can just go ahead and copy and paste an image in as well. Copy this, go ahead, hit the paste button, and just like that, I can input my image as well. So I don't even need to edit the item, I can simply go into the, uh, use my uh, vision panel, and access my image frame to have access to all of those tools and to quickly review all of the images themselves in a much larger frame as well. Okay, now let's start to review what information the vision panel conveniently provides. And there are four separate panels. First, we have our accounting, then we have our design summary, we have our calendar with our tasks and appointments, and we have our time billing timer, all of which can be restricted from users as needed on the company information window, users and security tab. So if we go to file, company information and settings, jump on our users and security, 
we can see under our attribute tree, if we go under File, Design Manager Vision, we can selectively grant or restrict access so people can't see accounting information or can't access design information, et cetera. So let's begin with our first panel for accounting. And our first entry is for cash. We can see our total balance of all asset cash bank, uh, banking accounts conveniently listed for us. And if we click on the plus sign, we can see all of those accounts themselves. So we have our cash checking listed with its balance and our savings balance as well. And those are the current balances as of today. So I don't need to come into my accounting tab, go to my checkbook and review my balance for my cash checking. As you can see, both agree at 24,619 and change and the same with my savings as well at 17,645 and change. So just like that, I can come into my vision pane and see exactly uh, my cash balances as of this morning. Next, we have our accounts receivable balance. We can see the total accounts receivable balance from all the unpaid invoices from our clients. And that reads 13841.92. If we go to our accounts receivable account on our account glossary, now we can look at our balances and you can see that matches perfectly. Again, summarizing that information for us so we can see it at a glance. And beneath our accounts receivable, we have two other options. We have our largest balance by project. And that's going to show us up to our top nine clients or nine projects that owes us the most for our unpaid invoices. And here it shows us the project code, the client name, and the total amount they owe us. And it's gonna show us the amount, the highest amount owed down to the lowest amount owed currently. Beneath that, we have our longest invoices overdue. That's going to show us which invoices have been unpaid for the largest amount of time. And here we see the invoice number, of course, the project code, and the number of days from the invoice date itself. So how long has this invoice been unpaid? And the entire balance remaining as well. So very conveniently, we can see which clients owe us the most and which invoices have been unpaid for the longest period of time. Now, one of the most handy features from our vision panel is the ability to further review the summarized information by easily running our accounts receivable report just by clicking the run report option. And here I can go ahead and run my aged accounts receivable report and we'll do so. Let's make this a bit larger. And we can see all of the information matches exactly between the report we're reviewing and what's presented in our design manager vision. We can see the total of each of the projects, what we're owed, the total balance, 13,841, exactly. And each of those invoices are being shown on our longest invoices overdue as well. So we can easily get more information simply by clicking the Run Report button and accessing the Aged Accounts Receivable Report itself. Now, as the invoices are paid in full, the Vision Panel information is gonna automatically update. So let's imagine that we finally get payment on invoice 10,002 from the Carters. Mm -hmm. So if we go to our cash receipts, add another one, let's go ahead and put that invoice number in directly. And we'll say they pay us in full, 1065, they give us a check. And if we go ahead and post that, once the vision panel refreshes, we can now see our invoice is automatically gone just like that. So the information automatically updates throughout the, uh, the design manager as well. Okay. Beneath our accounts receivable, we have our accounts payable information. Again, this shows us the total accounts payable balance from all of our unpaid deposits and invoices from our vendors. That's listed at 4,610. We can verify that as well. Go to our accounts glossary again, take a look at our balance for our accounts payable account. And absolutely, the two match perfectly. Summating all my information for me into one convenient area. 
And just like our accounts receivable, we have other information beneath the accounts payable itself. First, we have our largest balance by vendor. This is going to show us which vendors do we currently owe the most money. And again, I can see up to nine different vendors. I currently only owe three, thankfully. And I'm going to see the vendor code, the vendor name, and the total amount that I owe them. Again, with the ones that I owe the most at the top going to the ones that I owe the least at the bottom. Beneath that, we have our longest overdue. Which individual deposits and invoices have been unpaid for the largest period of time? And here, I can see the transaction number of the bill or deposit, uh, the amount, obviously, the vendor code, and the number of days from the payment due date, not the date of the transaction itself. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look. We'll look at uh, our, invo our transaction 10,043 for Century. If we go to our vendor deposit invoices operating expense window existing tab, that's our first one highlighted. And notice my payment due date was November 1st. And that is approximately uh, seven, uh, pardon me, exactly seven days uh, ago. So that's listing from the payment due date, not the invoice date itself, which is uh, obviously quite logical. Okay. Now, just like with the accounts receivable section, we can also run our aged accounts payable report directly from our vision pane as well. Just click the run report link right here. That gets us to our age accounts payable report, and we can run it to verify and get more information or a more detailed uh, display of those summated information on the vision pane. Click OK to print that. Let's make it a little bit larger as well. So we can see there's our three vendors, just as we have over in our largest balance by vendor. We can see all of their amounts that we owe them and the individual transactions themselves. And of course, the current accounts payable balance matches precisely as well. So if I did want to have more information or if I had uh, perhaps more vendors uh, than, than the nine that can be shown on the vision pane, I could print out my accounts payable report as well, very conveniently from the vision pane. And as our bills become paid in full, the vision information will automatically update, just like we saw when we paid our client invoice as well. So if we go ahead and uh, pay our bill for America's mattress, let's say, let's go to our payments and checks. We'll select our America's mattress. Let's go ahead and put that on our American Express card. We'll accept our payment list. And again, once our vision panel refreshes, we can see that entry automatically drops off just like that. As soon as a transactions occur, the vision pane is going to update that information as well. And that's the information listed for us on our accounting tab. Now let's move over to our design tab. And here we have a few options as well. We have our open proposals. Now, this shows the total amount of all proposals, including tax, that we have a deposit requested or required for, yet we have not yet received from the client. Beneath, we see the project code, proposal number, and the proposal date, along with, again, the amount of the proposal itself, including tax. That's not the amount of the requested deposit. That's the amount of the proposal itself. So we can see, hey, how much proposals do we have out there that we're still waiting to get those initial funds to get the um, proposal indicated as um, accepted and moving forward in the design process. And just like we saw conveniently with the, the uh, accounting information, we can run our open proposal report as well, just by clicking the run report link. That gets us to our proposal listing report. And I might want to narrow that down to show proposals that I don't have a deposit yet received. This should match our information on the vision pane exactly. And if we generate that, we can see just that. We have both of our proposals listed for us. They're awaiting client approval. So we've requested deposit on each of the proposals and yet have not yet received either one. And we can see our information there is listing uh, exactly as well.
once we receive a deposit for our proposal, it'll no longer appear on the vision uh, pane, as we can imagine. So if the Hilsons go ahead and send in uh, the requested deposit for proposal one, it's going to drop off our vision pane. So let's put a cash receipt in for them quickly to demonstrate. There's our Hilson project, and we'll see they gave us our proposal amount exactly. Let's say they put that on their American Express. And if we post, once the vision pane refreshes, just like that, it'll drop off the list. Completely interactive and up-to-date information at all times. Same with our open purchase and work orders. Now this will display all of the purchase and work orders that are currently open as defined by uh, our company, Advanced Options. What do I mean by that? Well, Design Manager allows you to tell, uh, to interpret how an order should be considered closed. And you do so on the company information window, advanced, on our company advanced options window, under the purchase and work order tab, we have our closed by selection. And I have mine set to vendor invoice, which is the default, which design manager comes pre-configured. You also have options for received. Have all of the pieces on the, the order uh, been received in full or a combination of both. A vendor invoice has been recorded for all pieces and they've been received as well. Ours is set for closed by vendor invoice. So in that case, all the orders listed here have not yet been uh, had a, a vendor invoice received and uh, input into Design Manager uh, currently. And beneath we see the order number itself, the date of the order, and the vendor code. From here, we can see we can run our open purchase order report as well. And I could run a summary or detail. I could sort this by project. And now we can see all of our Carter's Pennington home, oops, make it a little bit larger. You can see all of our Carter's Pennington home orders and our Carter's Brigantine Beach home order as well, all listed for us. Right on our open purchase order report, I can see since my invoice amount, my gross invoice amount is zero, I know that we haven't yet recorded any vendor invoices for our purchase orders. Once the bill comes in and we record that in Design Manager, just like we saw with our other information, the uh, purchase, the order in question will drop off of our Design Manager vision pane. So if we go ahead and click on our bills and invoices, and let's imagine that we receive our bill for our first purchase order listed, Go ahead and put our invoice number in, invoice date, etc. Once we go ahead and record our vendor invoice for the purchase order, again, once the vision pane refreshes, ah, our purchase order number four for our Carter's project drops off just like that. So on our design side, we have all of our open proposals. In other words, which proposals are we still awaiting the client to send us and, and have us record the funds for our deposit and all of our open purchase and work orders. What orders are out there that have not yet been completed in full as we define in our company advanced options window. Next, our third panel is our appointment calendar. Here we can see all of our future appointments and tasks that are not yet completed. And on the calendar itself, you can see that um, certain dates will be in bold. That indicates that a task or appointment has a, is a set for that particular date. And if you click on that date, let's say November 13th, Design Manager will jump and automatically highlight that particular task or appointment for you. Right from the vision pane, we can go ahead and review a task or appointment in greater detail simply by double clicking the entry in question and design manager is going to display the particular task or appointment right on our task or appointment window. 
So here we can go ahead and review our upcoming appointment with our contractor. The view more option beneath all of my open tasks and appointments allows me to jump right to that to-do list tasks and appointments window as well. So I have full access to my to-do list very conveniently from the design manager vision pane as well. So I can review all of my accounting information, uh, my open proposals and purchase orders, plus I have a very easy way to see all of my upcoming appointments uh, and tasks that are yet uncompleted right from the design manager vision. Lastly, we can use the timer to track the exact amount of time that we spend performing various tasks, phone calls, meetings, administrative work, etc. And I'm going to go ahead and click the, the green play button or start the timer, and we'll see how this can uh, be utilized. Now, I think the timer can really streamline your workflow and ensure that you're properly tracking all of your, uh, all of your time, particularly for billable work. So if you go ahead and let's imagine that we're making a phone call right now with a contractor or what have you, I could start my timer and ensure that I'm recording and monitoring my exact amount of time that I'm spending on this particular task. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the pause button at about 30 seconds here. And let's see what else other features are, very, uh, are, are available for us from here. Most conveniently, besides tracking our exact amount of time, we can use the timer on the Design Manager Vision pane to actually create time entries, even if they're non-billable. We still want to track all of that time so we can properly gauge how much resources, how much time resources we're spending on our projects. So if we click the Create Time Entry button, Design Manager is going to jump us right to our time entry window, and much of the information is already filled out for us. First, you can see I have phone calls selected. All of my time activities are optionally available for me to select on the vision panel. So that automatically defaults to my time activity. The entry is already coded to myself as the employee because Back on our company information and settings on my users tab, my account is configured to myself. So Design Manager knows when I log in as the administrator, I'm the employee as well. Now all I have to do is input the project. I already have the date configured, today's date. The time is listed for me, and Design Manager even transforms that time calculation into a fraction of an hour. At this point, I just need to put in my description. And we're good to go. I can put a location in. Whoops. Professional services. And there we go. I could always come back and put more information, of course, into my description. But this way, I can very rapidly record and make my time entries while I'm performing those various tasks. So here, this becomes a fantastic tool to really analyze the amount of time that team members are truly spending on projects. And it becomes a foolproof way to, to monitorize all the appropriate billable hours. So if I forget, to write down or put into my Excel sheet or what have you that I made my phone call, that time is lost. And it's certainly not available for me to analyze my time that's been performed on a particular project. Moreover, if it's a billable time, then that those funds are lost. So in essence, the Design Manager Vision panel gives you, that alone makes that panel worth, worth its while. Easy way to time all of your various activities and make your time entry almost seamlessly. And with that, that brings us to our end of, of our discussion on our vision panel in Design Manager. I hope to provide a solid review of the information provided on the vision panel and what occurs to update the information along the way. And I also tried to point out the specialized functions from the vision panel, such as the image frame, 
access to our help center resources, and the extremely helpful timer that can be instrumental in streamlining and properly billing all of your various time activities. And with that, I'd like to thank you for joining the discussion today, and I hope you attend another of our free webinars in the near future. Take care and have a great day.